if you wish, even more importantly, uh, how to explain the persistence, almost unopposed, of this paradigm, in spite of the fact that by any historical measure, the three decades when neoliberalism prevailed have been decades of relatively historically low growth for industrialized countries. Extremely low compared to the previous three decades, the post-war period, uh, but also fairly low compared to the turn of the century ones, the previous turn of the century, of course. Uh, it would be absurd to compare it with the interwar years that are anomalous in many respects, but in historical terms, it's fairly low growth. Hmm? So generally, when we have an economic political paradigm that dominates, that coalesces a large consensus, it's linked to a strong economic performance, not a relatively weak, not a terribly weak, but relatively weak in historical terms. And the point can be further emphasized if you think that when we look at previous crises, uh, most clearly the uh, 1929 uh, depression, but also, especially for the United States, the so-called crisis of the 70s, which was a perception of crisis much more than a deep, long recession, but with strong perceptions that uh, uh, economic situation had gone out of control. In both of these cases, we see rather clearly, radically, almost unequivocally, that this, this crisis brought about a very deep change in consensus about economic policy goals, methods, etc. Many commentators at the time of the 2008 election pointed to a similarity with the election of uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 19. 32 or even with Reagan in 1980, Roosevelt brought about the end of a long era of liberalism in economic thinking and brought in the New Deal. Reagan reversed to a certain extent this and certainly brought in the dominance of a conservative neoliberal paradigm. Uh, a lot of people expected the Obama administration to do the same uh, because so many uh, features of the situation seemed very similar. 